Today we're talking about a football club who have a truly special bond with their fans. And the story of that bond is very much told in football shirts. Hello and welcome back to Behind the Chevrons, the show which takes you behind the curtain to look a little bit more closely at some of the great football shirts of the world. Today, we're here in Copenhagen to talk about one of Denmark's biggest clubs, a team from here in Copenhagen called Bromby. And as I say the name Bromby, I want to apologise to any Danes listening out there for my terrible job at pronouncing your team's name. It's about time we got an expert who knows a bit more about the club, and that's where I'll introduce our guest, Nana. Nana, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm great. Great to have you here. Could you start maybe firstly, again, saying the team name correctly, but also just talking to us about yourself, who you are and where you're from and what you do? So the Danish pronunciation is Brønby. Mm. So that's, that's a bit difficult. Uh, okay, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I think you, you, could, you could manage by saying Brønby. Brønby, so, so okay. that's fine, yeah. Okay. I followed Brønby my whole life. Um, I grew up in, uh, you said that we are from Copenhagen. If you ask a Brønby fan, they'll say we are from Vestein, which okay. is like the western outskirts of Copenhagen. Um, and that's where I grew up. Mm. So for me, there was never any doubt that I had to support Brøndby. So I've been going to the stadium my whole life yeah. and been loving the club more and more uh, ever since. And yeah. as of today, I actually made my hobby my job. So now Amazing. I cover the club for a living as a journalist and uh, wow. travel Europe when we play Europe. And, yeah. uh, and of course, uh, all of Denmark by following Brøndby. Amazing. And as you follow Brøndby, is that through the work that you're doing? Is that for yourself or for a company or how does that work? It's um, like a fan media Great. called uh, Three Point DK, and then we have a podcast called Brunbilu that might be uh, hard for you to say <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we we cover of course the the Superliga team, but also mm. we uh, we watch uh, the games for the under 17, the mm. under 19, mm. uh, and uh, also so cover like the women's games from from more of a distance but we cover all things about the club um, and yeah we do videos podcasts uh, films of the fans and yeah. everything about the club. yeah brilliant brilliant talk to us about your your kind of fandom and love of the club growing up what are some of your maybe earliest memories or things which really got you uh, that really helped you fall in love with Bonvoy Actually, one of the, the best memories I have from like an early age was when we beat uh, Copenhagen 5-0 in Amazing. Brunby. Wow. Um, that, <laughs> that was a, that was a big experience for, for all Brunby fans. And, and actually quickly, for anyone who doesn't know, what's the rivalry? Yeah, yeah, talk to us about that. Because again, I mistakenly talked yeah. about Copenhagen. <laughs> talk to us about this rivalry with FC Copenhagen. Yeah, it is the biggest rivalry in, in Danish football. Yeah. And, and these games, the, the derbies are also games that like have some um, attention internationally mm. because the, the two fan uh, groups are the best in the country mm. and they do crazy tifos and and of course this this rivalry is is um, is uh, between the fans but also yeah. between the teams and and in, right. in some years these two clubs were also uh, battling for the championship sure. um, and uh, and we did that in in 2005 but yeah. then we had the we had a, a good season with uh, Mikael Laudrup as uh -huh. uh, the coach, right. and um, we beat them 5-0, and then we went on to take the, the championship. So yeah. that was a that was a great experience. It's yeah. it's never been done in a derby since then, and I right. don't think it ever will. Hopefully, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't attempt fate, no. but that's an amazing. So 5-0, that's a huge result. And again, kind of later on, any other things which which um, you're reminded of or precious memories from, from your time as a fan. Yeah, of course. But now it seems like we're a club who's just winning all the time. That's, yeah. that's not the case. We, we, were, we were very successful in the 90s and mm. Brambi actually went on to play a, a semi-final in the UEFA Cup yeah. uh, and were beaten by Roma in like the last minute of the game. Yeah. Um, I don't remember that personally, but <laughs> sure. that's, a, that's a big hurt still in, in yeah. the club. Um, and then we won many championships in, in, mm. in the 90s and everything. But then after the championship in 2005, we went on to a period of time mm. where it went downhill for the club, sure. um, both uh, like in, uh, in the results, but also financially. Mm. And eventually we, uh, we hit the, 
the bottom in 2013, mm. where the club was almost uh, bankruptcy and we were also fighting relegation in the league. Yeah. Um, so that was a tough time for, for being a fan, but also it was one of the best memories for me as a fan because mm. we, uh, we really stood together in that mm. time when, when, uh, when we came out to the, to the edge, mm. looked down. That's it. Maybe looked into a future without this club. Yeah. I think many people realized how important it is for mm. them, and for me as well. And and we went on in the in the last round of the league and uh, played mm. relegation uh, against uh, Horsens away. Yeah. And if we lost, we would go down. Wow. Uh, and Brumby has always been playing in the in the in the Super League yeah. since it was uh, formed. So yeah. it would have been a disaster. Um, mm. But we won that game, and that celebration was one of the greatest experiences uh, yeah. of my life also. And could you talk to us about this special relationship Bromby have with its fans? Talk to us about that. Um, yeah, what, what is that relationship like you know, with the club and the fans? How important is that? I don't think you can put into words how important that, that relationship is, because in, mm. in, in Bromby, the club is the fans. Yeah. So Bromby is a club built on values of hard work mm -hmm. um, and uh, also like when we get knocked down we get back up yeah and the fans are a big part of that like um, uh, we have also always been one of the best atmospheres in yeah in uh, northern europe I say, <laughs> maybe oh, uh, even, even worldwide <laughs> you know but um, so so that's uh, that's uh, that's a great thing to see yeah. when we do the tifos. Like they go, mm. uh, they go viral. Um, yeah. Our fans have also always been uh, like a motor for mm. for the club. And also, I think there's there's always been these moments when the club and the fans have hit mm. like a symbiosis. Yes. And now, before we get to look at some shirts, McClasey, just talk to us a little bit about Hummel. What's some of your maybe memories of old Hummel kits, or just your kind of relationship and the Bromby uh, fans' relationship with Hummel? I think uh, the, the cooperation between Bromby and Hummel is, uh, is actually quite historic in, in, mm. in Danish terms, uh, both because it's a very long deal uh, now, but also because I have not experienced in any way like this that uh, a cooperation between the shirt company mm. uh, withdraws the, the fans so yes. much in the process. Uh, and it mm. has always been the case in uh, in Brembyn with the uh, with Hummel and compared to like some of maybe bigger brands mm. that we had in in the past, um, personally I like that uh, yeah, we we get something special like yeah, for, for exactly. Brembyn yeah. because yeah. in my opinion Brembyn is a special club and yeah. we deserve something unique mm. and um, I think uh, Brembyn and Hummel has made mm. some very nice shirts uh, during the years and and also Hummel has has understood. Mm. Brunby and the fans yeah. very well by um, really listening. So Nana, let's start with the shirt you've brought in for us today. This amazing shirt, which is from a series of shirts that Hummel did to celebrate legends of various clubs. Nana, if you could start by just telling me who Kim Vilfort is, because his name's on the shirt here. Who was he to Brunby? Well, he is, uh, in short terms, he's Mr. Brumby. Um, <laughs> and actually, we have a nickname for, for Brumby Stadium called uh, Vilford Park. Really? Um, yeah, so he's, uh, he's one of the biggest legends. Of course, he played so many games for the club. We also have it on the, on the shirt, there, yes. his, uh, his number of games and won uh, seven championships. Um, yeah. And also, he was, uh, he was a fun player to watch. Mm. Um, he could do some uh, some nice stuff on the pitch, and hmm. um, at the same time, he was a hard worker. So he yeah. he represented some of the the values that the the club have. Um, yeah. And he he never went into a tackle fifty percent, <laughs> always one hundred percent, and we love that. Um, and um, yeah, he was he he still is uh, working in the club right. now in the talent uh, youth department, yeah. uh, and he has been for so many years yeah. actually, almost since he stopped his playing career, I think. Wow. So he's also loyal. Yeah. And yeah, for us, like Mr. Brumby, there's, there's no one bigger mm. than him. And he, he actually also uh, went on and helped uh, Denmark win the European Championship right, in 92, right. so. Wow, so he made perfect sense yeah. to put on the shirt. And of course, this shirt is just a beautiful design in itself. What are some of the things which 
you particularly like about this shirt? Well, first of all, I actually like, like the, the deep yellow color yeah. um, because it takes me back to, to like the older Brumby shirts uh, back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and with the pattern uh, and the, the shiny, um, yeah. that's it for me so is so retro and yeah. I, li I, yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, for sure, um, for sure. And also they made the, the logo in the, the retro uh -huh, design. Uh -huh. um, uh, so it's it's very well done uh, through and through for me, and mm. and also what I like about the the cooperation uh, between Hummel and Brembo is that they also actually got the partners to the sponsors right. to to buy in on making the most uh, beautiful shirt possible. Um, so yeah. this is actually not the the. The real logo of, of the is it like an older older yeah version? it's more old old school look also yeah. for them and yeah. um, and they made it blue and everything so it's great. yeah it's a perfect shirt this it's great and I can see a few marks and things it's obviously well loved yeah, it's such it a is. beautiful shirt I use that a lot <laughs> yeah hey if I, if it was me I'd be the same this is such a good one but guys there's more to come let's take a look at some more shirts now now we talked about the special relationship the club have with its fans. Let's now look at a shirt which really exemplifies that. Let's take a look at this wonderful shirt. Nana, what is the story behind this one? Well, this is a, a story that started uh, during the Corona lockdown. Right. The Brumby fans uh, were not allowed to go to the stadium. Actually, some of the, the months we weren't even playing football in the mm. Danish league, of course, it's on the whole world. Yes. Um, and then the fans were like, how can we do something to help the club, which obviously was uh, lacking some uh, income from the games and, mm. and stuff like that. And the fans really wanted to help the club. Yeah. Wow. And um, some people in the club, uh, along with the fans and Hummel, came up with this idea to make a shirt um, that the fans could buy that would uh, help the club. And, yeah. um, so it was actually the fans that kind of said, we want to do this, yeah. Yeah, the fans really wanted to help. That's and great. Like, uh, the club didn't want to just beg for money. They wanted sure. to, to, to also give something back for, for, for the help. Mm. Uh, so they came up with, uh, with this shirt. Mm. And um, yeah, the, the, the text on the front. I was going to say, could yes. you explain this one yeah. <laughs> for me? Yeah. It says, Aldri alene, which means never alone. And it's, right. a, kinda, uh, it's a saying that uh, originates from uh, one of the songs uh, that we sing in the stadium, uh -huh. where we sing uh, that you're never alone. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was so perfect in, in these times where people were actually alone in their apartments because uh, mm. of the lockdown. Yeah. But uh, then in the end, we were not alone yeah. because the Brumby family was still... Uh, very much alive and, and present in, in every way mm. of, of uh, our lives. And uh, this shirt exemplifies that. Yeah, it does. And it's so amazing to have that almost as a memory of that moment, which would have been a difficult time, of course, but to have that and for the, the fans and the club, that bonds that we said, that's such a good kind of piece of evidence of how strong that connection is. Just quickly, what, do you know what the number is here? Yeah, <laughs> very, very quickly, uh, I think uh, the, the sale numbers went crazy. Right. So um, <laughs> the Brumby fans also have a way of like uh, wanting to break records and um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> show that we are, how good we are. And yeah, yeah. Um, I think Brumby actually made a counter Oh, and we could really? see how many shirts uh, <laughs> we were selling and there were like a set a deadline sure. for the sales because they have to be, be produced mm. and shipped and everything, of yeah. course. Um, and this is the number of shirts that were sold um, on the deadline. Great. Like, just to put it into perspective, I think in the stadium can can uh, hold like 28,000 people when so it's full. The so this wow. is... Um, it's a lot of that's shirts. A lot of fans, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a that's a lot of support. That's really, really good. And before we move on, I'm immediately noticing this this design. Can you tell us a bit about this? It looks a bit like another shirt to me. Yeah, but it's it's uh, it's actually quite funny because it's um, it's a design that run and it again it shows the, it shows the relationship between the club and the yep. fans that uh, they were inspired by a fan made design right. by a fan uh, huh. who's. Uh, designing shirts in his, uh, f his free time. Wow. And he designed a shirt uh, almost like this, and it became yeah. the, the inspiration for what yeah. ended out uh, being the, the Aldri Alini shirt. So actually, it's, huh. it's, it's, a perfect, uh, it's a perfect ending to the story that actually yeah. this shirt uh, made by a fan 
for yeah. the fans, yeah, helping the club. Another way the fans are involved, yeah. That's so good. And it really is a nice shirt. It's a uh, yeah, great job from everyone involved. Yeah. Now let's look at the latest Bromby kits, the home and the away kits for this year. We'll first start with the home. And Nana, before we talk about the design, I hear you've been involved in this shirt in some way. Tell us about your involvement as a fan. Well, we, uh, we are a group of fans from, uh, from Brumby who, um, who had a say in actually designing this shirt. Amazing. And the away shirt. That's very uh, cool. So that's another uh, underlinement of the, the great yeah. relationship uh, between uh, Hummel and Brumby and also the fans, uh, that this is um, shirt designing is a process of, of everyone mm. involved. Um, mm. So uh, I was uh, actually in uh, Aarhus uh, at the Hummel headquarters in, yeah. in the fall where we uh, went through um, some of the first uh, like ideas for, for the new shirts. So yeah. it's uh, very funny for me to see now what... Yeah, the, what was that what like as a, as a fan? Obviously, you know, every year you see the new shirts. What was it like seeing about, a bit about the process? Actually, I was amazed that how much in detail this work really, really? is how crazy much detail <laughs> it is in designing a shirt like this because wow. I just went down to the, the yep. shop and, and buy them every yeah, year yeah, and I think, yeah. yeah, it's a yellow one, and yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. of course, but, but it's, there's so much work behind and so many ideas and so many things that hmm. when you start out with something mm -hmm. and you think, yeah, here it is, no, it's not. So, yeah. so I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed about how, how much um, mm. work there is in designing these shirts. Yeah. And there's so many things that I love about this design, but the first thing is so funny. We talked about that legend shirt and you see here in the body, we've got the same yeah. chevrons. Isn't that great? I love that. And actually when we were in, uh, in Aarhus at, uh, at Hummel, we also talked about that Kim really? Wilford shirt yes. because of this, uh, this yeah. pattern. Uh, I think it's when you have a plain yellow shirt, mm -hmm. this makes it come more alive. Exactly. I really, really love that. And also it has that retro vibe in mm -hmm. it that mm -hmm. I really like. Yeah. So, um, I, I really love that. It's great. And the other thing which I like, and it's been happening on a few other kits, using the two, two shades of blue, I think that looks really nice. You've got that on the collar and on the cuffs. And the chevrons, these are great as well. It's yeah. like a kind of pattern in the chevrons. That's great. Was there anything else which you'd, you'd like to pick out or talk about with this design? I just think it's very well done all in all with the two shaped, uh, shades of blue, both uh, on the, mm -hmm. there, but also on the sides, oh, yes. where you have like yeah. these... Uh, very narrow, yes. dark blue, um, nice. and it, and I like that because it makes a, a yellow shirt not all yellow, yeah. but it's not too uh, white mm -hmm. to make it mm -hmm. yellow and blue. It's still a yellow shirt, mm -hmm. but with blue details. Yeah. And I think I think that's nice, and that it's uh, very through and through. It's really good. And just quickly as well, what's this on the inside uh, neck here? What does that say? Juan Buiev fra Vestein. Um, not Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. That's, that's excellent. It's such a nice shirt. This is certainly one I'll be looking to add to my collection. I think it is a really, really nice one. But this isn't it. We've also got the Away. Let's take a look at that now. Now, we talked about the home having a kind of retro aesthetic. This is pretty wild. No, no, what is going on here? This looks amazing. Yeah, this is a wild one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the first thing you notice on this shirt is, of course, the, this, uh, this, the pattern, which is actually uh, all kinds of things representing of uh, Vestein, where we come from. Yeah. So you have this mural-like look on the wow. shirt. And uh, this uh, tall building is one of the trademarks for Brønby Strand, which is uh, when you see this house as a date, you know yeah, what yeah. that is. And of course, you have, uh, you have the, the Susun uh, logo mm -hmm. here, the, mm -hmm. the, the club's logo and mm -hmm. the stadium. And also, actually, the... The train, uh, the, tr the S train uh, oh, yes. here, yeah, yeah. turns through uh, all uh, Vestein. There's so many details so many on this details. that I think that when people buy this shirt, yeah. they could look at it for, for hours. But, yeah. but for me, this is a crazy nice mm. uh, away shirt because we, like, we take our home with us yeah. away when we go to conquer the other yeah, cities. Yeah. So we take Vestein with us. Yeah. For me, this is really cool because this is identity. Wow, there's so much, there's so many, so many details which yeah. uh, throughout the shirt. And um, again, you, were you involved in this one as well, the away shirt? I saw the idea okay. and I immediately loved it. Did you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was kind of a, a crazy idea, uh, yeah. but uh, with this graffiti vibe, uh -huh. um, it, it just, for me, was perfect. Um, mm. Also because it's an away shirt and it's kind of 
cheeky and a little. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and I like that because we we like to stick our noses. Uh, yeah. So for me, this is a very cool away shirt, really nice. and everywhere we go, people have to know where we come from, That's and this it. Uh, shows it perfectly. It does. And it's like. Like last season, when we also had a blue away shirt, we, wow. ha we had that a few times mm. because I think many Brumby fans like that we are yellow and blue. Mm. It's great. And I think it works so well with the home. It's something a bit different. Really, really nice. And as you say, if you get hold of this in person, you'll get to see all these amazing details. It really is nice. And now, before we go, do you have any favorite Brumby shirts? I know you're wearing one here. Talk to us about this one. Yeah, this is my favorite one. It's, um, it's an away shirt. Um, which is uh, black and gray. And I like this uh, shirt because you can wear it like today. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you won't even notice that it's a football shirt, but uh -huh. uh, if you know, you know. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. so for me, this is just a beauty um, mm. because it, in all its uh, simplicity, but uh, it's still a very, very cool uh, yeah. away shirt. So it's just a, this, that's my favorite. That's I, have, I have three at home so I can change. Ah, oh, brilliant, brilliant. Nana, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been great to have you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking about Brumby shirts. Perfect. And all the best for this season. Hope you guys do really well. Thanks. <laughs> guys, that'll do it for this episode of Behind the Chevrons. And if you want to pick up a Brumby shirt for yourself, you can do so at hummel.net. But until next time, we'll see you soon for another episode of Behind the Chevrons. Take care. <laughs>